is up, Spartans? You are listening to HVAC Masters of the Hustle podcast. And here's your host, J-Dub Moneymaker. And welcome to episode 212. First off and foremost, I want to say thank you for everyone that reaches out every single day and emails me threads and threads about how this podcast is bringing you and your company to the next level. That's what it's about is to put these heavy hitters, these one percenters, on stage, on a platform to let you guys know not about their successes. That's all good. But what did they have to endure to get to the level of success that they are today? Because I mean, with everyone listening across the nation, we are making a huge impact and it might be that little bit of information that gets you through the barrier. And man, we got a great episode. So if you're driving, you might want to pull over. You might want to call dispatch and say, You might want to push my call back a little bit because we got bombs going to be dropped on this episode. So make sure you guys got your paper, your pen, and let's go ahead and welcome the one, the only, Mr. Danny Klein. How you doing, brother? Man, what an intro. I'm uh, I'm blessed to be on here. Thank you for giving me the giving me the stage and having me on here to pour into your your team your audience the hvac the service industry the all of the trade so i'm blessed to be here thank you and uh man i'm, I'm excited to see um what we get into absolutely man so first off and foremost let me let all my spartans and listeners know out there you know me and danny we became friends last year we went to a mutual uh training event And what really struck me about this individual is not only is he a young cat, but he's a shark. He's hungry. Um, He's really here to make an impact to help you guys understand and girls understand. Again, I say it on every episode. We all have this Spartan inside of us, right? It's my job, my duty, and my obligation to bring that beast out. And he understands about tapping into the beast Danny, talk about first off to my listeners, what's this beast that you have in you, bro? Because man, I, I, I see it. You're hungry. You're motivated. I mean, you you are definitely a elite, just like your shirt says, elite sales training right there. Yeah. So I, I would say I had this inner beast inside of me, or I thought I had this beast inside of me, but it wasn't woken up for a large portion of my life. And for those of you guys that don't know me, I'm 24 years old now. I've been with Andy Elliott and the Elliott group for about three years now. And I came from the car business, but I didn't have that real inner beast wake up until I had someone show me what that really looked like. And Andy was that first example. And then even then, it wasn't to my max potential, that max beast mode uh, mentality, the action, the effort, the skill. And I actually ended up having my dad pass away. He drowned in a pool um, about two years ago. And that's when everything really shifted for me to start to start going crazy. Once you realize that, hey, you've got one life, you got one mission, you know, you only get to do this once. And um, I just started to, to really tap into that. It kind of just came out came out and I always tell people don't wait for something bad to happen to wake up and for me unfortunately it, it did take that to happen but now I'm on this path to do more for my family my father the legacy creating by uh for, for my last name for my bloodline for the people that train with us or look up to me so absolutely love it so let me ask you before this inner beast woke you up right what were you doing prior so I was Go, going back before even selling cars, I was actually delivering Chinese food. Ah. I, I dropped out of school. I went to college and uh, I didn't even really want to go to college, but parents were, oh, I'll go to college, you know, do that or the military, right? And <laughs> I'm like, whatever. I ended up just go with the flow, right? I'm a young 18 year old kid, go to college. And I'm six, I'm six months in. I was always a, a smart kid. I graduated with like a 3.8 and I really didn't tried and put a whole lot of effort in I was just naturally things kind of came quick to me and um but I, I i six months into school dropped out just was like dude this is not giving me something didn't feel right on my heart i wasn't getting the right information it wasn't what i wanted to do for the rest of my life and like as a young kid they're like well what do you want to do for the rest of your life it's like, oh lawyer doctor or whatever that is for you right and nothing just matched up nothing felt right to me when i was going through some of this stuff and, and learning and ended up just dropping out. I literally stopped showing up to classes, dropped out for about a, 
a four to six month period, I didn't even work. I didn't do anything. Um, I lived in my dad's house. He had a one bedroom apartment, came from absolutely nothing. Um, divorced parents, youngest in my family, older sisters, eight years older and uh, older brothers, 10 years older. Great family, very tight, but just didn't really come from a whole lot. And then I started delivering uh, Chinese food for about a year. Then I met one of my high school buddies who I used to wrestle with. And, and I attribute a lot to what I've done and the mentality to wrestling. And we'll, we'll Absolutely. Get into, get that, that's, that. a, that's a tough mindset sport like right the, there. The, the player versus player, the weight, the mindset, you know, we'll, we'll get into that. I can run all, all day on, uh, on, on that. But Buddy comes in. His name was Logan. And we're working out in the gym. I see him. He says, what's up? Long story short, he shows me what he was making in the car business. I'm 19 years old. He shows me a $15,000 paycheck. Wolf of Wall Street moment. I'm like, dude, you show me a check for 15. I am quitting right now. All right now. I will. I I, ju- I slammed a pre workout. I'm like, I will fucking <laughs> the weights right now and I'll call him. He's like, done. Next day, guess what? Dad was the GM. Got lucky. He said, hey, we'll get you a job. Got me hired in the next day and uh, start off selling cars. And it's just, it was just a crazy environment. Guy uh, had an ankle bracelet in, I, I, literally an ankle bracelet. I am um, filling out my my interview sheet or whatever they had given me, and he looks up and he's like, "I got you and a uh, little Mexican. You guys are on my team. We're gonna be on the used car department." That was my first <laughs> day in the sales, and I'm like, what the- "What's going through your mind? What's going, going through your off? mind?" And and I I was just like, "Dude, part of me was like, this is kind of fucking cool, like <laughs> like this was unlike anything." And I can see the guy; he's got a Rolex, and I'm like, "I mean, like, there's money around me," and I'm just like man, these guys aren't that sharp. And I was like, these guys got this money. And I'm, I'm seeing the, our vice president has a Lambo parked out front. All the finance managers got nice cars. And I'm like, I'm going to kill these guys. Cause I was like, I always believed it. I just didn't have the right information or or skills, but car business was where I really got my start in sales. Um, truthfully, it was a little less than two years in the car business. And, um, yeah, that's where I found that 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 hunt, the thrill for the kill, to to be able to get out of that that sal- the salary, the hourly, the, the hourly, chain yeah, of, the, that. of the hamster wheel and the rat race. Yeah, getting out of the rat race, right? Well, let's talk about that, you know, because a lot of people in the trades are comfortable with making hourly or salary, right? And I'm always like, cut the shit, cut the cord, yeah. commission, get paid what you're worth, 100%. right? Talk about talk about maybe some of my listeners that are scared to make that leap of faith and what you were able to see through that journey and the journey that you're on right now. Well, first off, I would say you should be more scared of staying in the same position next month and next year as you are to change. And yes. I think a lot of people, I, I don't understand um, what that even means to be comfortable to make uh, three and four. That is isn't uncomfortable for me. So what I would tell you is change your perspective. Everybody needs to change their perspective. You're worth more. I came from nothing. I wasn't, there was a point where I couldn't speak clearly. I stuttered. I was nervous. I remember in college public speaking class, I was, I was shaking and literally was like, dude, I could have, I could have went out and I got a Xanax. I was so freaking nervous from anxiety. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and it's funny that you mentioned that because I posted a picture on my social media uh, yesterday of one of our last events that we threw. And it's right here. And I make sure that when I'm on stage, I bring my boys up and everything like that. And I hand them the mic because they have done a study. I don't know what college it was, but they've done a study that says that when you go to a funeral, people are so scared of public speaking that they would actually be the one they would rather be the one on the, in the box rather than the one talking about the memory shared with the person in the box. So, so I mean, it resonated with me how crazy it that was, right? And I, I'm an introvert. It's crazy for me to go on stage in front of thousands of people and bring the energy. People are like, no way that you get nervous. I get nervous every time I go on stage. You still, my my you heart's still. beating. Well, it's because you, you've studied so much on your craft that, that you know exactly where you're going to go because you've educated and you've trained and you've learned and you've uh, told yourself that you now are a trainer. You're a public speaker, that you're a savage that you're this yeah. person this 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 new identity but for everybody for everybody that's um nervous to make the jump to 100 percent commission i mean you would be so surprised how much easier how much easy like easier it is 
for you to actually go and make these huge amount of money. I mean, whether it's a hundred grand, that's an amazing amount of money for a lot of people, but two, three, four, five hundred, especially in the service industry and in the trades, there is so much money. Everybody's talking about solar right now. Dude, oh, yeah. HVAC and, and the um, service industry has more money than I've ever seen. And I we, we talk and uh, train a lot of people and it's like, there is so much money that's available there. You just have to go and learn the right skills. You got to get around people like Jason. If I didn't know what I was doing, I would go to one of his classes. I would learn how to sell and then I would go out. Wow. And then there's nothing mm -hmm. to be afraid of because now I got the right information. I got the right resources. Rob and duplicate, right? And, and that's what I tell. It's like you could drop me in any single market. And it's kind of like the uh, show that Grant Cardone did a couple years ago, right? Where he went yeah. in any market and it was a hundred bucks and was able to create a million dollars or whatever it was. Yep. I've been proven. And that's what makes my training so valuable. And so in high demand is you drop me and my team off in any market. Doesn't matter. East coast, West coast, the South, we implement the process procedures, the step-by-step -step playbook and we get average tickets, 19,500 closing percentages, 60 to 70% all across the nation, you know, and it's crazy the results that people are getting, but it's, it's not just the training. It's going back and implementing, right? Yes. Talking about you as a, as a trainer, the importance of keeping on track with your team to making sure that they're going back, they're implementing their, you know, role playing, getting uncomfortable, being comfortable. You are speaking my language, bro. A lot of what we teach, we teach on a million different things and we can go down the rabbit hole on um, different techniques as this. I got my tactical Thursday banner up for some of the Zoom call trainings that we do. Um, but like I talk about execution over perfection. I say mm -hmm. it almost every single day. I said it all weekend at our master Coder seminar execution over perfection. I would much rather say, hey, here's the scripts. Here's the things that we need to learn. Here's what we need to do on the day. Here's the right steps. We're going to go over it for just a few minutes and then guess what? You're going to go in the field. You're going to go on the phones. You're going to go on the test drive, whatever your process is, and you're going to go and use it. You'll learn more in the field going and doing it after you already have the right information than going and spending another hour, another day, another week trying to perfect it because the game is it's never perfect. It's never perfect. You guys think that we have everything mastered and down pat. We still catch ourselves. And we know how to navigate these things because we've been in the situations because everything you'll get hit with new things every single day that you're in the field. So execution over perfection is my mantra for anything that you learn. Just put it into action as fast as possible. Speed will always win. I'll give one example. Imagine this. If me and Jason are running a race on a mountain and let's just say that Jason is trying to run a perfect race. He's got his shoes tied perfect. He's, he's thinking about his breath work. He's trying to think about his pace, right? And there's another guy that's like me. I just, I lace up, I'm ready to go. I'm thinking about winning the race. I might, I might be running so fast that I'll trip up, sprain my ankle, scrape myself up, my breath, it's gonna be hot, it's gonna be crazy. And then there's another guy that's worried about not making sure he doesn't trip, keeping the right breath work, keeping the right pace to make sure he can go. While I'm running, that guy was so worried about having the perfect technique there was another guy that was just focused on the goal and focused on uh, executing. Absolutely love that story right there. You know, one thing that I want to talk about real quick that you just mentioned was surrounding yourself by like-minded people or winners, right? So I'm going to give my listeners kind of the platform of, of how I was introduced to you at an event. And I was about to go on stage myself was in a breakout room and Mr. Elliot and his team were about to get on the main stage. And what I feel like is I had a pretty good group coming into my breakout room where I had stand up uh, people. And I feel like y'all were like, oh, shit, I got to get uh, Elliot some people. So all of a sudden it became a war. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was like my team versus your team trying to see who could fill the room. And I love the energy because I mean, I just kept looking back and forth. I had my bump box. I mean, we were just having a great guys, ass time. You guys were jamming. And the fact that we're, <laughs> what's most amazing is the fact that we're on this call and we're laughing about it. Cause in that moment, I remember being like, dude, war. I, I don't want to piss this guy off. I'm like, he, his, his stuff is looking like beast mode. Because your your uh, your spot was right there, it was perfect. <laughs> you had to walk all the way down, so they were funneling every, funneling everybody in. 
and we're like, oh, dude, we start in 10 minutes. So our team, <laughs> let's go all the way down, all the way down. And you guys are jumping. So I think that was, um, that was a very fun, fun moment. That was a lot of fun. Uh, recognize. And it's like, it's like you go into a room, uh, the other players can recognize the other players. And it was like, if you were on the flip side, your team would have been doing <laughs> the same thing. And it's like, man, respect in both rooms, man, you, you killed it. I went back, there was a recording I watched and you, and you smashed it, man. So. Yeah, no, it was awesome. Um, you know, and that, that's what I wanted to say is the group that you guys have at the Elliot, right. Is absolutely amazing. And I want to talk about the culture that you have because, you know, you definitely have that win, win, win mindset. And I want to talk about how, how is it that you get the whole team to buy into the concept? Because you all, I mean, as I'm looking at me being a, a influencer or a trainer, a, a whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, I look at that and I'm just like, wow, it amazes me because it, it speaks volumes of the team that you have. Right. And, and the leadership of Mr. Elliot. I think a lot of times I'll start with this, man, an individual can be beat, but a team can't be beat. And I think a lot of times on that path, especially salespeople, when they start performing and doing very well, and I run into it all the time with people. And well, you know, so what's next for you, man? Uh, when do you, what, what business are you going to start, man? Where do you see yourself in 10 years in five years? And it's like, oh, what are you going to do on your own? And it's like, it's not about that. And I think a lot of times people, they, they let their ego get in the way. Um, of certain things. And, and, uh, and he pays us, he pays, pays us all very well. He always makes sure he takes care of us. He's an amazing, lead, amazing leader, but it starts with the culture. We all were watching Andy when he first started, he went from making a bunch of money, selling cars to running a store, turning it around to making no money and just shooting YouTube content for free to build his business. And I, I found him and he had changed my life going from making three grand a month to 20 and 30 in the car business in a matter of like 90 days. Talk, talk about how he was introduced to you and talk about that growth. Yeah. So I found him, I was actually at a, at a point where I was struggling. Um, my first couple months I came in, right. I thought I was going to go and smash it. It's not what happened. <laughs> it's not what happened at all. I went in, I was, uh, getting my ass whooped to say the least. Um, I think I was averaging six to 10 cars a month, which pays like three grand, four grand a month and I'm working day in and day out, eight o'clock to nine o'clock and uh, one or two days off and just a rough environment. So I'm watching YouTube videos. I look up car sales training because I need to get better. I think I'm gonna get fired because I'm like, if I don't produce, I'm gonna get fired. And I find one of his videos, I watch three of them. The next day I put the training into use and it closes a big deal that pays me a $1,500 commission. And I just text him and I say, dude, thank you. You've changed my life. You allowed me to see a different perspective and given this free, free value, free training that I didn't even have in my environment. And uh, that growth then uh, went even further when I started training and starting investing in myself with Andy. And the first phone call was so funny because he called me right after that. He calls me. He's like, hey, you need to come out to my seminar. And he's got 3000 subscribers on YouTube. This isn't like the training company. Like there's no building. There's no ads. There's no like website. And he's like. Dude, it's a thousand bucks. Like, let's get it set up. Come out here, train with me. And I didn't end up doing it right there. But the next day I said, you know what? Fuck it. You know, I'll, I'll lose more money not knowing the right information than the money he's already made me from the three videos. So I was like, the worst can happen is I'm staying in the same position. Same thing as the beginning of the call. And yeah. I flew out, ended up making my first uh, 10 grand check that same day, flying out mid month, flying out on the back half of the month and selling 20 cars in two weeks. When in the first two weeks I had two cars out. And what'd you do? That was different for me. It was the, I let the, let the beast come out. That was that initial phase, letting my mindset. Um, he really allowed that, that new identity to, to pull out. He ripped it out of me. I had it in there somewhere, that wrestler mentality, that savage dude that was going after it and, uh, believed in himself. And because I was correlating my identity with my results that I wasn't getting, I was looking at the, the eight cars. I was looking at the $3,000 a month. And I couldn't, I couldn't wrap my head around making more. And then he showed me a new perspective. He showed me some skill, changed my mindset. And I just went crazy. And once I proved it to myself once, I knew that I could duplicate it over and over and over. And that was just the first level in, in growing. 
Now, talking about going from automotive car sales, right, to taking the leap of faith of joining the team yes. uh, of being a coach and a trainer and putting you on a platform. Let's talk about that because, you know, that's a big leap of faith right there, leaving, you know, where you're making probably several hundred thousands of dollars a year mm -hmm. to take a whole new leap of now teaching people what that inner beast looks like. Yeah. So when my dad passed away, I remember I sent him, I sent Andy a picture. And th at this point I was uh, training heavily and then I kind of leaned off cause I was doing well. Some, some ego came in a little bit. I didn't, I wasn't going as hard as I was um, in the past and I slowed down a little bit and um, father passed away. The next day I sent him a picture in the gym. Then literally the very next morning, my dad, I don't know, drowning in a pool in another state. And um, I'm like, I got to get up. I got to I got to prove to myself on the hardest day of my life that I can still stay disciplined. And, and it's, it. like, it's crazy to most people. But I knew that that moment, proving that to myself and to my family was going to allow me to give me the strength to always remember that day for the rest of my life. And I sent him a picture and said, thank you for showing me um, how to recreate myself, how to um, establish the discipline that sent him a whole paragraph. Little did I know that he was growing so fast that he was actually going to move to Phoenix because he was in Oklahoma at this point. And he said, you know what? Hey, I want you on my team. He called me like a couple of days after. And he was like, I want you to come work for me. And he had already shown me how to make all the money. And to me, it wasn't even about the money anymore. I was like, I had already saved up a whole bunch. I had learned the right skills. And then once you realize that like you lose like someone that's very close to you, like my father was my best friend. I'm like, the money doesn't matter. What I want is a bigger life. I want to go and do more. And I knew that he had that same thing. If he taught me how to do that, I knew that he was going to go to a whole nother level. Seeing him change in one year. I'm like, if this compounds year over year, we're going to do some damage. And I was like, whether I got to help him um, take a, literally, I'm going to take a whole huge giant pay cut, which I did. I went back to making literally sacrifice. Went back to the same thing, but the bigger sacrifice would have been taking no risk, staying, mm -hmm. staying in that same, uh, that same spot. So I said, you know what? I'm all in, bro. And uh, we just started going off the list. Did we didn't have a CRM and have anything? We were just calling people, uh, building value, building relationships, helping people. And um, I had that belief inside me. I always say that the belief comes before the paychecks. Mm -hmm. I was coaching people how to make money and kill in the car business, but I wasn't making money in my in our own company. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. A lot of people make it to make it. Yeah. And it was like, was I, it was like, was I a fraud? And I would always look at myself and I knew that no, because this no. was the process of building the business. I had the right skill set. My security was in my skills and myself, yep. not in the bank account, not in the money, not in the cars, not in houses, watches. It was in me. So hundred percent. It was, it was amazing. And then guess what? Yeah, we're killing it. So, you know, I knew, I knew that I had this, uh, this gut feeling that he was going to do something special and he was always going to take care of me. You can, I'm a good read of people. And uh, I don't know if it's something that I've learned or just being around people I can feel the energy. I can tell, and uh, I can sense aura and, and I can read, I can just read people very well. Yeah. Not, and that's, that's what makes you so heavy in sales right there, right? Is being able to read people, to be a chameleon, to be able to adapt quick. So, you know, I love everything that you're talking about and, you know, your execution of where you started and where you are now talk. I mean, and I know it hasn't been an easy journey, you know, talk about as you're making, you know, the transition, some obstacles that were in your way that you had to overcome and endure um, because, you know, it's nice to have the Corvettes and the nice watches mm -hmm. and, you know, the nice things, but you know, people look at our lifestyle and they go, oh man, you're lucky. I hate, I hate when people say that, right? Oh, you're lucky. It's like, no, the countless hours, the, the opportunities of the fear yeah. that I walk through the door when other people wouldn't take that opportunity or that risk, you know, putting a hundred thousand dollars on the line or yeah. $200,000 on the line. Talk about those 100%. risks or those, those hurdles that you had to endure, Danny. Yeah. So, I mean, there was, there was plenty of different uh, things I went through with the biggest thing was having that, having that team and having that environment around us that made it a little bit easier to never really get myself. I never was really in the deepest, darkest of, uh, of hurdles. I always found my way out of them quickly, whether that was realizing that, Hey, we are, we are as a, as a coming on as a sales guy in the beginning and now I'm um, evolving into helping with marketing, um, lead our team, um, and just take on a few different hats. You realize that, Hey, 
this is what building a business is about. And you realize, oh, that should be like this. And we should have this system. And it's like, oh, we got to make money. We got to develop these things. This is what people go through. Yeah. And then the trial and error of um, either building out something that doesn't work, which you have to fail over and over. And you think that you're smart. You think you've done your research, um, getting the right CRM and then transfers. They they crash. One of the biggest things is we had a uh, we had all of our data with all of our guys and we went to transfer it and it dispersed through everything, all notes, all information, all the data. And that was a moment where we're like, okay, well, we're back. We're going to be back to, um, we're all going to trust each other. We're all going to say, Hey, if this is your client pass it through. And we just, we went through and just pen and, and notepad and just rebuilt and called back through every single person in the database, re-updated things. That was a big pivotal moment for us as we were, as we're going, that was probably one of the craziest, um, moments and, and, and mess ups. What is it that you all do there to create such an amazing company culture? I mean, I watch your videos on social media of you guys being at a park and, you know, hundreds of people come together and, and you wouldn't think of Andy being a sales coach. You think he'd be a personal trainer or some shit, just the way that he's ripped. Right. Yeah. And all of you guys are in this shape. You know, you talk about health is wealth. We'll talk about that as well, but Talk about talk about that uh, that journey and the mindset and the culture and everything. The the culture it starts with um, letting guys know that they can they can become whoever they want to become. If we have a guy that comes in and whether he's in here for a year or or two years, five years, or he's in here for three months, that you have the ability to um, you have the upward mobility in our company. If you want to help and you want to do YouTube videos, you want to shoot stuff, you want to brand yourself, you want to make connections. Um, there's no ego. Andy's bit and envisionment of everybody within the LU group is having um, a bunch of people that all have uh, brands within the LU group, have um, networks and are have their own styles and all become um, influencers that impact the world. We always make the example of like, what if there was Andy Fursella, Bradley, Alex Armozzi, Ed Milet, Tony Robbins. Can you imagine if they all had one company, what type of damage that they would do. Mm. And we're trying to, to duplicate that, but we do things outside of work. We, we do a team run together. We like, we went on like a seven mile run. He's like, Hey, if anybody wants to come, everybody shows up. We, uh, we all show up to church and it starts with doing things outside of work. And then Monday. knowing, hey, listen, if you don't, if you don't hit your numbers today, it is okay. We understand that you are trying to make money, that you do want to be successful, that you are in a, a, a shark environment. You're in an environment where, um, there is a lot of pressure that's just around you to be great. So there's no, mm -hmm. um, there's no managers inside of our company. They're saying, Hey, you have to do this. And this is what has to happen. Everybody's um, becoming almost like a, an entrepreneur entrepreneur inside of our, inside of our company, inside of one of umbrella and Ellie group um, to, to build more. You know, if I want to go and I'm like, Hey, I'm going to develop this product or I'm going to do this training or run an event here. Cool. You can build it. You can do whatever you want. You can brand it. And, uh, we can kill it. And Absolutely. They're, they're support. You know, there, there's, there's nothing really much that they'll say no to. They're very open to doing anything that, that we're willing to step up to the plate for. So that definitely uh, brings, brings a, a lot of the, the culture together, making our guys Absolutely. feel like they're, uh, they're, they are in control of their destiny. Absolutely. And one thing that I like that you mentioned was, um, you know, faith going to church as a team, as a group, you know, as my listeners and I talk about this open with my faith and everything, when I started this journey four years ago, podcasting is really when I dove in deep with my faith. And man, this journey, I mean, yeah, it's been a roller coaster ride, but taking this leap of faith has been the best journey of my life. I mean, you talk about making a massive impact. You talk about, you know, uh, I have 14 employees and more than half of them are my, are my family. So giving my family a lifestyle that they could live and being able to, like I said, not only help people make an impact, but the bigger picture is, is my wife and I, we adopted both of our boys. And so we give a lot and a big portion of our training and, and merchant swag stuff to help kids in the adoption agency as well. So you know, what we're doing and, and the things that you guys are doing across the board is absolutely amazing. One thing that I want to talk about is the importance of branding. Um, that's one thing that I see you doing as a personal brand, getting yourself out there and taking initiative and doing branding and 
doing social media, I want you to talk about the importance of putting yourself out there. Um, you know, a lot of people fear to put themselves out there because now they're vulnerable, you know, talk about your videos, your content, why you do it. Well, I would always think like, Hey, if I'm starting a business and I think a lot of salespeople, um, and just people all over, they don't have a long-term vision. That's why they never start branding or start marketing or start, um, generating any attention. Everybody knows that money follows attention. You see all these people, it's just, they don't believe that they can do it. They don't believe that they're valuable enough. And, um, it's it's everything if i were to think like if i could be the best sales guy in the world but if i don't have leads if i don't have attention what am i going to be doing i'm going to be still in that same hamster wheel <laughs> trying mm -hmm. to make stuff happen and if i look up to guy i look we look up to guys like bradley and i'm like mm -hmm. man look what a brand does look what a brand does look at guys like uh elon musk and um you see that um what's the guy that has all the luxury brands the new the new number one most richest guy richard bernal yeah. he has all, all of the luxury brands just based off brand elon lost elon lost 200 uh jeff lost like 50 billion but this guy only lost 7 billion because he has the brand mm -hmm. and brand brand is literally everything so i always talk about three things the three c's that you have to have when branding consistency clarity and community if you have those three things you can scale them but without having um leads what are you what are you doing but i always believed that uh if i was going to want more that i have to start putting out content i knew that was going to suck at first didn't care i knew that was going to get better and i knew that people um were going to like what i had to say because i believed that i i had something good to be able to give people to consume and to and to grow with so if you have the right skills well guess what now you just got to put it out there and you gotta gotta keep growing you know so one thing that you and i were talking about is you guys are throwing some some pretty impactful and massive events this year um, throughout 2023. Talk about some of those events and, and where maybe some of my listeners that want to join the events to get to the next level, where would they be able to sign up? Yeah. So they are in, they're in Scottsdale, Arizona for anybody as wondering where we're at. We're in Scottsdale, Arizona. We hold events literally every single month. Um, some are more, um, business focus, some are leadership focus, some are straight sales conferences. So we hold a multitude of conferences. We have a website, um, Elliot247.com. If you want to reach me directly, you can shoot me a DM at official Danny Klein on Instagram, or even shoot me a text at 540-840-3241. I'll send you over the itinerary. I'll walk you through, figure out which the, the best event is for you. So um, that way we can connect in personally and, and I can help you uh, level up as well. I got to ask you, Danny, you know, it sounds like you knocked it out of the park 2022. What is your goals for 2023 business and personal? Yes. So business, uh, I want to have a rock star team of 10 directly under me. Um, I want to have um, our business and our entrepreneur department really dialed in even more than it already is right now. Um, I want to um, just impact more, obviously, but want, want to make more money than I did year over year. I want to triple um, what I've done last year, which would put me in the the seven the seven figure range. I'd clear just under. Oh. I haven't broken it yet, so I want to break it in in production and commissions paid um, this upcoming year, which on pace with the record month last month. So, um, yeah, I just want to grow more in my relationship. I want to pour into more. People. Twenty-four years old. I want my listeners to understand this, right? Like delivering a good mindset. We're talking about seven figures. He drives a beautiful cherry red Corvette. We were just talking about it, CH, right? And it's just absolutely stunning what you're doing, brother. I have to ask you this question: What is your drive, your purpose, and your why? What, what is it that just what drives me? I think a lot of people, they, they kind of go to um, the legacy. I think what really drives me is uh, my father is, and this is hard to even talk about sometimes which, and it took me a while to realize this. Cause I was like, oh, I'm going to, you know, I want to you know make my father proud and do stuff for my family. And I realized that, like my father really wasn't the, the best father. Um, and I want to grow up and I want to be this badass man this badass guy that can show um young salespeople that you can get it now i want to show people from all around the world all sales industries that it doesn't matter um how long you've been doing something where you're from what your story is what you've gone through that you can go and do it so i just want to impact the lives 
of millions. I want to get better myself. I want to be able to look at myself when I'm freaking, you know, if I, or even like in a year, I want to be able to look at myself in a year and know that I have no regrets. I've just played all my music every single day. You know, what drives me is just, just being able to be here for our team, help, help build this, this amazing company and, uh, and just contribute more every single day. Cause once you get to a point where you are making a lot and I'm not even in the ballpark of some of these guys that I look up to that are multimillionaires and in the billions range. And, you know, it's like they don't have a, a team around them or they're not really pouring in. There's no fulfillment. I just want to be fulfilled. I want to focus day in and day out, be where my feet are, just enjoy this life and um, just impact people. If my message can affect people and they can affect more and that can compound, Love then, then I've, I've done my job. You know, I've done my job on this on this planet, on this earth to help people just do more for their families and find their purpose, find their mission. Love it. Danny, I got listeners from business owners, service technicians, dispatchers, managers, supervisors, sales professionals. Uh, what would you like for them to get out of this episode of HVAC Masters of the Hustle? I would go back to the beginning of um, execution over perfection. And I want to talk about one last thing, total, re total recreation. If you are a business owner, if you are a salesperson, you need to have the ability to alter and change your identity to become somebody different. Who you are right now is not going to take you on who you want to be in the future. If you want to grow your business, grow your team, what you're doing, what you've done last year, what you've done the last couple months is not enough to sustain where you want to go for another year. There's another level to go to. And I think a lot of people, once they get a little bit of taste, once they get that, that one tier and they're doing better than most, there's they're in this uh, this one ballpark and you have to realize that there is a whole nother game. There is a whole nother level mm -hmm. that it's limitless. There is no end game for me. There is no real uh, end result. It's it's an endless pursuit of a better version of yourself every single day. So I would tell you, realize and look at yourself, identify who you want to become and go and chase it. Learn the skill, learn the right things. And guess what? The money will follow every single time. I promise. Boom. Love it. Danny, thank you for being a guest in the hot seat, brother. It's an honor. Until next time. Bam.